Hello friends, my name is Puneet and I'm head of data science and data engineering at Carousel. I'm very excited to be here today and share my thoughts about this very interesting topic, delivering personalized, targeted and real-time recommendations with deep learning. Let's get started. Here is the agenda for this talk. I will start with sharing some context about Carousel. That will help me make a case uh, for how AI can play an important role in personalization. Then I will share more on recent advances in deep learning in the space of recommender systems. Finally, I will share more around how we have leveraged machine learning and deep learning at Carousel for recommendations. Let's begin. Carousel is one of the largest and fastest growing classifieds marketplace in the world. Carousel is available in eight Southeast Asia markets now. More than 250 million user-generated listings is a testimony of the trust users place in Carousel and the value it provides. Eight years back, Carousel co-founders started this journey with a mission to inspire everyone in the world to start buying and selling from each other, making secondhand the first choice. It has been an amazing journey and the recent investments by prestigious groups like Naspers, Telenor and Nevo has brought the company valuation very close to the magical dollar 1 billion mark. Now data science team at Carousel is responsible for leveraging the power of machine learning and AI to serve company's mission. And there are a wide variety of interesting, challenging and impactful problems the data science team has been working on from content generation to content moderation, content discovery to ads targeting. There's a lot to be done. And the team has used deep learning extensively in solving these problems in each of these investment areas. With that context about Carousel, let's start with the topic for this talk. Before we go deep into deep learning, Let's start with why. Why we need AI for delivering personalized recommendations. Personalization at a high level has three important components. First, there is content that you want to recommend. For example, the listings on Carousel or videos on YouTube or Netflix. Then of course, the consumers, users of this content. That's the second important component. And finally, the personalization algorithms that match the content to the users. Let's see how AI can prove to be a game changer for each one of these. Starting with content. Now content is like an iceberg. Without AI, we have a very shallow content understanding, only the surface level, the attributes, the metadata, and some basic stats from historical performance. But that can't take us too far. AI allows us to develop a deeper understanding of this content. It helps go beyond syntactic and gain semantic understanding. It enables us to discover content associations and gives us the ability to predict. Let's look at this further using an example. This is an example listing from Carousel Singapore. Here someone is selling a secondhand iPhone X. Let's see what useful questions can AI help answer that are hard or near impossible to answer otherwise. The first thing potential buyers would note in this listing is the image. How appealing or repulsive is that? Is it bad? How bad? And why? How can AI help make it more attractive? Then of course price matters. What would be a fair price for this second-hand smartphone? Is it a good deal or do we Make it a great deal. Once we know that a user is interested in buying an iPhone, what text? We can show other similar iPhone listings or even other smartphones as alternate options. We can even recommend iPods as they are related. Similar, alternate, related, all these recommendations are powered by understanding of content associations. All these are important but tough questions. It requires smart AI solutions to make dependable predictions. Now let's move on to our second dimension, 
users. Just like content, by default, we have a very narrow understanding of our users, standard demographic information and activity history. But there is so much more to our users than just that. AI helps us develop a more holistic 360 degree view of our users. We can infer and then also confirm their likes, dislikes, figure out their interests and preferences, mind behavioral patterns and all that. This empowers us to tailor our experiences and communications for each individual user. Let's again look at an example. This is a hypothetical user on Carousel and let's say there are these are the various listings that this user has explored or bought during the last few weeks. I will wait a few seconds so that you can get a feel for what this user has been up to. Now, narrow view for this user would be a 40 year male who often browses or buys toys and books. That's not bad, but it's still very limited. If you look closely, you can clearly see more interesting patterns. For example, what age group do the books and toys belong to? Genre and author affinity for the books, brand and category inclination for toys, and so on and so forth. This kind of deeper user understanding can help answer many useful questions. For example, what would this user like to buy next? What matters to this user? New versus used, price, buyer-seller interaction, experience, and all that. It's not hard to imagine how such comprehensive user understanding will allow us to better serve our users. Now we have reached the third pillar of personalization, the matchmaking. This partner compatibility table here is pretty representative of how we typically go about matching content to users. This user is a dragon and all dragons love rats. So let's show all rats to this user. He would love it. And sorry, no ox for him. Sounds familiar, right? I believe this approach is like painting the wall using a very broad brush. Every single brick is painted exactly the same. And this is what a deep learning based relationship matchmaking algorithm might look like. According to the supporting article, this ML model was able to spot mutual interests, find compatibility based on emotions and personality patterns, and is even robust against deceptive presentations. This definitely appears most, more trustworthy than depending only on your date of birth, isn't it? Don't get me wrong. I'm not recommending that you let AI decide your life partner. The point I'm trying to make is that AI will take rich content understanding and user understanding signals as input and make very individual match decisions, providing us with the ability to make very fine matching decisions. In contrast to painting the wall, AI provides the tools to create a fine art. Also matchmaking has various other dimensions beyond what to recommend. For example, when, where, how often. Also another common decision to make is explore versus exploit. AI can help power intentful balance of exploration and exploitation as we will see. For example, if user bought a specific printer in cartridge in the past, we can recommend the same cartridge again later as user would like to buy the exact same ink on a periodic basis. And given user bought some Beyblades, maybe we can interest him or her in also buying a Beyblade Stadium, even some other action toys like Nerf guns. To summarize here, AI is a powerful tool to help build deep content understanding, gain comprehensive user understanding, and produce fine match between the two. It really empowers us to tailor make experiences and communications to delight our users. Now that we have addressed why AI, let's talk about how machine learning in general and deep learning in specific can help with personalization. 
This is a simple view that clarifies how AI, ML, deep learning are all related to each other. As you can see, deep learning is a branch of machine learning that deals with neural networks with multiple hidden layers. In the classic ML approach, the onus of feature engineering lies with the model developer. For example, for a face recognition task here, developer will have to manually identify what meaningful features to include and how to extract those in a reliable manner. For example, eyes, nose, mouth, etc. And how far are they to each other? As you can imagine, this is a pretty complex task. Deep learning takes away this manual step altogether. If you can provide it huge amounts of data to learn from, that's the big difference. As you can imagine, this has proven revolutionary for the important AI tasks involving unstructured data, for example, images, voice, videos, and text. Today, almost all the state of the art machine learned models for a wide variety of AI tasks in these domains are deep learned models. But what about recommendations? Is it a structured data task or unstructured data task? As we will see, the answer to this question is not straightforward and depends on the approach you take. Two most common approaches to recommendations are content-based filtering and collaborative filtering. Content-based filtering on the left recommends items based on the item attributes. For example, if user liked a comedy movie, more comedy movies will be recommended. If you buy a Harry Potter book, more Harry Potter books will be recommended. Often simple heuristic based statistical models are used for such content based filtering approach. Collaborative filtering leverages the wisdom of the crowd. It learns to learn content associations based on the rich volumes of user engagement data on the platform. Such content associations go much beyond what item metadata can capture. For example, recommending Nerf guns to someone who searched for Harry Potter book. This is where the magic of serendipitous discovery happens. Classic ML approach to collaborative filtering is based on matrix factorization using techniques like SVD. Starting with a user item engagement matrix, as you see on the left, you get two independent matrices, U and I, as you see on the right. Matrix U represents a k-dimensional user embedding for each user and I represents item embeddings in the same k-dimensional semantic space. Using these user and item embeddings as the base, a wide variety of recommendation scenarios can be powered by simply computing dot product between embeddings. Some of these scenarios can be user to item recommendations or item to item recommendations or user to user recommendations. Now matrix factorization for collaborative filtering is a pretty old but still very powerful technique. It is simple, effective and often a good baseline to start with. Unlike the unstructured data tasks we talked about earlier, this one doesn't require much feature engineering and is really good at helping discover interesting stuff that the user might not have discovered themselves. And there are challenges too. Given it depends on the engagement data on the platform, it doesn't work well for new users and new items for which we do not have much engagement data yet. This is called the cold start problem. Also, the backbone of this model is based on collaboration. If the engagement matrix is extremely sparse, there is not much collaboration to learn from. With that background, let's jump into what deep learning has to offer for recommendations. Now, deep learning for recommendations has become a very active area of research in the last decade with significant advances that we will talk about next. A wide variety of deep architectures have been proposed with companies like Google, Netflix, Spotify leading the way. Now is the time to look into some of the most important and cited deep learned architectures for recommendations. This is a 2017 WWW paper. This architecture is a straightforward representation of matrix factorization problem using deep neural networks. It replaces the simple linear multiplication function of user and item embeddings with a deep neural network that is expected to capture 
more nuanced relationships between these embeddings. Input here is one hot vectors for item and users. Therefore, the metadata information is still not used in this model. This paper is from YouTube. This model tries to predict what video will user watch next. Therefore, it is modeled as an extreme multi-class classification problem. In addition to the user watch history, it also takes additional side inputs like user search tokens and demographic and bio information. The video and search token embeddings are also learned as part of the model training. It's a pretty heavy model. The architecture is very flexible, but it requires a bit of feature engineering. For instance, the example age feature here is not the user age, but the age of the video in the training example, that is the label. An interesting observation here is that it does not capture any time sequence aspect of the watch and search history. This is another paper from Google that talks about their app recommendations on Play Store. In this architecture, they have combined the classic ML approach of using a linear model on top of a wide set of sparse features and deep learning approach of using low dimensional dense features. The dense layers can learn the item and user embeddings as we saw earlier and shallow layers can provide additional metadata. This is another very interesting architecture from Spotify to power song recommendations based on similarity between two songs. Now each song here is represented as a 2D image and CNN based architecture is used to generate a 40 dimensional embedding for each song. This approach is purely content based and can be used for content based recommendations. These embeddings can also serve as an input to other collaborative filtering based recommendation models. Now it is time to get more personal. Let's talk about how we have used deep learning for recommendations at Carousel. Carousel being a C2C marketplace for buying and selling secondhand items poses many unique challenges. First one is that our inventory of items is extremely volatile. There is high influx of new items and outflux of sold items. On top of that, each item is unique. That results in extremely sparse engagement metrics. Finally, the e-commerce domain is very different from entertainment. A user's interest in movies, music is expected to be more stable and evolve gradually, whereas a user's buying intents shift frequently and significantly. We have tried a, like many different approaches to generate item and user embeddings to power both content based recommendations and collaborative filtering based recommendations. Given the challenges I have shared earlier, we have found that each approach has its own pros and cons. Today, we are using multiple approaches, each one optimized for a specific recommendation use case. Uh, there's no time to go into details here, but as we continue to invest in this problem space, I envision that we will be converging to a smaller set of common solutions powering the wide variety of solutions. One such common solution we are working on is towards building universal user embeddings that can be used for multiple tasks. As this project is still under active development, I won't be able to share much as yet. You can refer to the related research paper from Alibaba Group I have linked here for more context on this approach. Now I would like to share more on how we have tried to provide recommendations in a very targeted manner. We today have multiple recommendation sections on, home, on Carousel home screen. We have chosen these sections to target our recommendations across a few important dimensions. First one is user activity history. Some sections provide recommendations based on users more recent actions on the platform, whereas others try to capture users interest over a longer period of time. Second one is granularity of recommendations. Some sections are very specific and provide recommendations at listing level. Some are at keyword level and some are very broad category level. This enables us to create well targeted content sections. Now, next important aspect of targeting is what content fills each section, right? Here again, we try to create a fine balance of exploit, expand and explore 
based on the deep understanding of content associations. Explore here means the ability to recommend relevant and interesting items that user might not have discovered on their own. And this is a very important goal for recommendations. The next aspect is real-time recommendations. Let's talk about that as well. Let's say a user visited a listing that has been created just few seconds back. How do we find listings similar to this new listing in near real time? As item to item similarity depends on computing pairwise dot product between every two listing embedding pairs, this would be extremely expensive if listing space is large, like millions of listings that we have. One very scalable approach here is to index all listing embeddings using their locality sensitive hash. This enables us to do a real time approximate k nearest neighbor search on top of this embedding index. At Carousel, we have used the Spotify's open source lib called Annoy for this purpose. Now let's take a different example. Let's say a user has viewed a few listings in the current session. How do we refresh our recommendations for this user in near real time? At Carousel, we have used item to item similarity approach to find listings similar to users' recent actions. We already talked about the embedding index based on locality sensitive hashing for near real time search. We also pre compute pairwise similarity scores for a significant number of listings for an easy lookup. Many interesting research papers have come out recently that focus on near real time recommendations based on users' current session. I have added a link here to one of the more popular ones. Now we have covered all aspects of the topic for today's talk, but we're not done yet. <laughs> to summarize, we talked about multiple challenges and common approaches to power content based and collaborative filtering based recommendations. We discussed the variety of deep architectures at a high level and the approach Carousel has taken given our unique context and challenges. There is a healthy skepticism in the research community around the impact of deep learning for recommendations as many research paper results have not been reproducible. That's something to watch out for. Despite that, I do believe the future of deep learning for recommendations is extremely bright with multiple new directions like using attention based models or reinforcement learning gaining traction. So do keep an eye. Finally, I would like to leave you with this quote from Satya Nadella. With all the abundance we have of computers and computing, what is scarce is human attention and time. I strongly believe AI and specifically machine learning and deep learning are the key to deliver personalized experiences that respect each user's most important resource, their time. And I would like to thank you for giving me your time and listening to this talk. Thank you.